All right, so this is day two, CAPM, constant acceleration particle model. And so we're familiar with this type of graph so far. We've, we've seen this a number of times in the CVPM uh, where we can translate the uh, slope of a position time graph into uh, a velocity. We have defined the slope of a position time graph to be the velocity. Uh, and then also from a velocity time graph, we know that the slope of a velocity time graph is the acceleration, et cetera. So we have uh, to repeat the definitions. Yes, please. Always take notes when there's stuff on the screen. Okay. All right, so this is a position time graph, and we know this already. Be the slope of the position time graph is the average velocity. I'll just say velocity. So when we take the slopes here, Whatever this slope is, it's going to be the velocity. So um, if the slope is two, if the slope is 10, and we know that that slope is gonna be two or 10 meters per second. Um, let's see, we also know that, um, The slope in this case is going to be constant. It's never going to change between any of these two points. Uh, it's only going to be one slope or a, a constant value. So for linear data, as we see here, the slope, which we know is velocity, the slope will be constant. Therefore, the velocity is constant. Because by definition, the slope of a position time graph is velocity. If the slope is constant, the velocity is constant. For linear data, the gaps between the positions are the same. Go from 0 to 5, 5 to 10, 10 to 15, and so on. All right. Is everybody tracking that all right? Any slope that you get arbitrarily, that is in any type of space in your math classes, can translate to something physical well, in physics as the velocity in this case. And then if we get the slope of a velocity time graph, that slope will give us the acceleration. And that's where we stop, because there's no slopes of acceleration that we take in this brand of physics. But uh, in other brands, you will, you might. So for linear data, the slope will be constant, therefore. Velocity is constant, constant velocity. It's a straight line, horizontal, never changes through space. Or never changes through time, it's the same, same uh, velocity. Uh, okay, so that's what we know about the linear case. Um, And there's, I guess I can put, I should have also put the next bit here, right? So for linear data, the slope will be constant, therefore the velocity is constant. And there is only one slope. We're comfortable with that idea, yes? There's only one slope that we can have in this line. Whether we take the slope between this lar uh, final point here, this initial point there, or this final point and zero, it's only one slope. It's constant. And in this case, it's positive because it's uh, increasing in position. Um, so that's what we, uh, we know. 
something else. Um, okay, it's linear and therefore, as we mentioned already, this is constant velocity. It's pretty easy, I hope. Any questions on that? This is what we have been working with for at least a good month in various forms. So I just wanted to uh, go over that again so that we can now translate to the curve situation and see what's, what's happening when our position time graph is an actual quadratic function or curve. So some sample data for this position time graph would be something like this. X and meters, centimeters, or some form of meters. Time in seconds. Let's say we start off at the origin, then we go five, one, two, yep, fifteen, three, and so on, right? Our typical um Standard for time is zero to five seconds. Okay, so the gaps are the same. This is linear data. We have now translated that linear data into our graph up top. We know that the slope of this graph, this position time graph, is the velocity. Since the data is linear, the slope is constant. Therefore, the velocity is constant, and there's only one slope. So just to clear things up, it's constant velocity. Now, here's one thing that you can do on the quiz today. You don't have to make your, your motion diagram to be, you know, you don't have to have specific increments on it. If you want to just not worry about that and just show the uh, motion diagram to reflect constant velocity, you can just draw it with, uh, with the dots evenly spaced. Right, so if I draw a line and I have a dot right here, I can just draw another one just to show roughly that the gaps are the same. Again, you don't have to have these specific numbers down below because that can get a little cumbersome, especially when we are increasing position dramatically. Sometimes I've, I've seen on the homework that people have an issue with um, properly uh, Marking, marking their positions on the motion diagram. So you can just, you know, do something like this. That roughly shows me that this is constant velocity, right? And you're good to go. That, that, that would be fine. You don't have to worry about the um, position markings down below. Is that fair? Seem good? So I think we can hopefully work with that okay. Now on to the uh, first graph of the motion in a straight line worksheet. I'm going to start off first with what we did in the CERs, where we started off, we got the claim that the object, let's say, I'm going to go with the first guy. So if you're following along CERs, be a homework assignment. I'm on the Google Classroom looking at the instructions, acceleration CERs. The claim, A, a car speeding up, increasing position in the east only. That corresponds to the uh, first graph of the motion in a straight line worksheet. So let's dissect it as much as we can. So that if you need to, you can put these different dissections that I'm about to write onto your graph to show me that you understand what's going on. You know, you're being very complete about your answer. Okay, so let's start off with the claim, CER, right? A car speeding up, 
increasing position in the east only. This is easy for you guys. This is easy. You guys are ready for calculus right now. Oh, yes. Okay. So that's our claim. You don't have to write this on your quiz. Again, don't be don't be so didactic as to lose focus and give me the answer. Oh, I gotta write this, or if is it okay if I don't write that? Just give me the stuff. Give me the right stuff. I'm just writing claim. You don't have to write that. For example, you guys get caught up in the trivia, trivial stuff. Yeah. Minutia. Yeah. Different from nuance. Uh, so let's do evidence. Well, I did an experiment and I got these positions. Remember that video I showed you from last year where class we were doing CAPM and the obstacle gaps were increasing? Well, for there, it was increasing then decreasing because friction. Um, All the way down. So let's say we start off at zero, zero, the easy case. I go five in one second. I go to 18, something like that. And she did that. Uh, then I go to 39. Uh, like that, 67. This thing is really cooking. So we already know that this is nonlinear data. Okay, so we would not draw a best fit line, but we would draw a best fit curve, if you will. More technical way of approaching that, but let's not be technical as to lose the focus, right? So plain English, every second. Zero to five, five to 18, that's 13 gap. There's, I can't subtract anymore, that's 21. And then that's uh, 28 and so forth. It's just dramatically increasing. It's funny how subtraction gets crazy or lost. Uh, so, the, so this is nonlinear data. Before there was linear because the gaps were the same. Yes, Sophia, Lorenzo, yes. I'm picking on people. Pick on pick on uh, Nonlinear data, the gaps are dramatically increasing. I'm really proud of you guys who are improving. So many of you from before may have been a little bit crazy getting adjusted to all the situations and I heard a little this and that. I get it, I get it. So I'm gonna check in on you guys, make sure you're cool. You know what I mean? All right, but very good. So gaps are dramatically increasing. Or you can just say increasing. Well, let's say dramatically increasing. Or the gaps are unequal. Because with linear data, the gaps were equal. Or you can say gaps are not equal. That's how you know it's not linear. So then we go to graphing this data. So we know that we're going to have a best fit curve. Not the best fit line. So we go to take translate that evidence, that data, into a curve. Um, you can plot the points, but it's going to be something like this, as we see in the motion diagram. We already know that if we take the slopes of those lines. Of this curve, if you will, that that will represent what? 
the slope of this position time graph will give me what? Anyone? Just to find it. The slope would be velocity. Yes. The slope would be the velocity. Before we saw, let me just go up top. Guy. We saw that in the CVPM or in the constant velocity case, every point on this best fit line or around the best fit line is part of the same slope. It's only one slope. It's only one slope. It's what we said um, right here. Only one slope. And it's the same slope. One same. Okay. But here, again, definition is true, still true. The slope of a position time graph gives me the velocity. But let's say that as I plot these points here, let's say one, again, I could have been more dramatic on that. But again, this is best fit, so we don't have to cover everything. Um, what do we say? We say uh, five and 18. Sixty-seven, and we squeeze it in there. One twenty. So let's do this and do that. Do something like here again. It doesn't have to. It's not always going to fall on me. Again, I drew the curve before I plotted the points. I could, you know, do something to fit those points a little bit better. Maybe let's do that, huh? Let's erase this guy here. So we have that, and let me go back here. And let's do a best fit curve. A curve that best fits all of those points. Most of the time, the points will be off of the curve or off of the line. Um, so let's talk more about what's going on there. We stated up top, definition, slope of position time graph is the velocity. For linear data, the slope will be constant. Therefore, the velocity is constant. And there's only one velocity, only one slope. I'm going to repeat things. Ooh, 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 ooh. Repeat things here, just to, so that we can ingrain that, know it from the belly. Again, the slope of all or any or a position time graph is the velocity, just repeating. For linear data, we said one thing, but for nonlinear data, guess what? We just represented, represented nonlinear data up top. For nonlinear data, there are Many slopes, more than one slope. How can you say that, Mr. Kelly? What is going on there? Like, why is there many slopes? If we look at every point on this curve, we can see that if we take, and we, we're just talking, we're not talking about the points out here. Let's talk about the points on the curve, the actual points on the curve, some geometry, you know, the point. Uh, if we take a, a slope of a point here, and let's say arbitrarily we take a slope of a point there, I'm just going to draw a, what is called a tangent line. Again, we won't dissect that much today. But I'm gonna draw a line that depicts a slope at each of those two points. And notice something, 
it's going to be a little bit tough for me to get down there, but I'll do the best I can. So when I draw a line that represents a slope at this point, I'm going to try and get the line up top to be a little bit off of the curve. And then I'm going to have the bottom part of the line touch the or x axis like so. Let me, you can see it a little bit better when I draw up top here. So I have a line that comes up. Try to get it as best as possible. Screen is not have enough stability on that. Um, but the, your line should look something like that, right? What do you notice, anybody, about those two lines? What's the same or different about them? What do you notice? Anything. It doesn't have to be right or wrong. Just anything. Well, just obviously looking at the two lines you made, they're linear, so you can um, get their slope. Um, okay, so any, so someone else, very good. Uh, are the slopes going to be the same? No. Why not? Next, you're, you're, you're right, Sophia. Anybody else? Uh, let's go to Ian. The slopes are not going to be the same. Why do you know that? They start at two different positions. Start at two different positions. Good. Anybody else? I'm looking for one clincher, the smoking gun. But you're you're on it. They're two different positions. Is go ahead. Uh, one is steeper than the other. Thank you. That's nice. Which one is steeper? The 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 the, the longer guy, right? or uh the longer one is steeper yes the longer red line is steeper than this guy in down below okay so that indicates slope is greater here therefore the velocity What's happening then? Is the velocity increasing or is it constant? Is the velocity growing or is it steady, like in the previous case? You just stated that the slopes are different. Slope is smaller, smaller, therefore the velocity is small. Between those two red lines, is the velocity going to be constant? Is the velocity going to be the same? I would say no. Why? Well, because we just took um, <clears throat> the velocities of these two points, and then I think it's logical to assume that the other two points, if you were to take more points, then they also wouldn't be the same. Because absolutely right. I mean, we we know by virtue of nonlinear data, we're going to have different slopes. We have two slopes so far. This slope is smaller than this guy here. So the velocity will not be constant. It actually is going to get larger and larger and larger to indicate um, that the object is speeding up. Because isn't that our claim? Go back to the claim. A car speeding up, increasing position in the east. So we know by the data that our car is going to speed up. The gaps are increasing. They're not equal. Draw a best fit curve. We've already, and we also define that for nonlinear data, there are many slopes. And now we take a look at two of them on the curve, and we notice that one slope the slopes down at the bottom here are going to be smaller than the slopes going towards the 
the end of the curve. So it's getting, it's going from small to large slope. Okay, we're going from small slope to large slope. Let me just write that up here. Uh, okay, oops, didn't change over. Okay. Um, For objects speeding up or accelerating, right? We That's our claim. For objects speeding up, the, slo ah, the slopes, um, let's see, go from zero, too large. And by definition, if the slopes in a position time graph go from zero to large, then the velocities go from zero to large. That means that the velocities are going to grow. They're going to increase. That's what happens when you put your foot on the gas. You speed up. Your velocity, your speedometer go, you know, the, the dial starts to run, you know, raising from zero on and on and up very quickly, right? Changes position very fast. So for objects speeding up, the slopes go from zero to large. Um, let's see, that is the velocity goes from zero large. Knowing that definition that the slope of a position time graph is the velocity, we see that the slopes are actually going from zero to large, which means that the velocities are going from zero to large. If we were to graph a velocity time graph, we go from zero to large. Velocity meters per second, time in seconds, we go from zero to large. That is what the velocity time graph would look like translated from this position time graph. We are increasing in slope. Therefore, we are increasing in velocity. Everything is in the east based on our claim. Everything fits. We're in the east for velocity. And that's what it would look like based on the definition and based on what we know. Uh, empirically from our data. I will stop here. If you approve that, please ask away all questions. I sense in the ether that there may be some questions. I have a question, Mr. Kelly. So this is the velocity time graph for accelerating. Um, for deaccelerating, would it just be um, uh, like the same kind of line for the velocity time graph, except going below, y, below the x-axis? It wouldn't have to go through the, it doesn't have to go below, but it can go in the opposite direction. So what Miles is asking, if I'm not accelerating anymore, let's say I'm slowing down or decelerating, the proper blah, blah, blah term, decelerating, slowing down, slowing down. If I'm slowing down, I'm in the red here. I'm going from large to small, large or large to zero. I come to a stop I'm on the brakes. I'm coming from 60 miles an hour, slowly 40, 20, you know, whatever. I'm coming slow, steadily getting um, slower and slower until I come to rest right there. Now, uh, this is just going towards the east, okay? Because remember, this is, all, this is the east domain, whether it's position, velocity, acceleration, is always east. Well, as long as we're on the x-axis, we'll be going to the y-axis, north-south. But this is all east. So I'm slowing down, I'm staying in the east and I come to a stop. But then if I you know, turn around or going the opposite direction, then yes, I can come back um, uh, west. But um, this red line, it cannot, to your question even further, 
that red line cannot go past zero for this curve. I need something else to go the other direction. I have to change direction. I have to make a graph that does the opposite of this. I have to slope up and then go the opposite way for slowing down. Um, or actually, I, I have to go, I have to, I have to have one that slopes the opposite direction. Like, um, I'm just going to put a little inset here. Okay. So I'm going towards the east here. And then if I go to the west, I have to do that. I have to change direction. Therefore, my velocity can continue to uh, um, go from zero into the west domain. Actually, nope, 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 nope. I have to, um, let me amend that. But I do have to change direction, that's, that's the idea. So if I'm, gonna con if I'm going to um, uh, increase position in the west, uh, that would look like this. Let me erase. Again, you won't have to do this for your quiz as far as the slopes and all that, but we're coming back to it. But I'm going to, after I do this example, I'll, I'll continue with the stuff that we need for our quiz and we'll go to our quiz and end of the day. Okay. Uh, um, so I would do something like this if I was going if I was increasing position in the West, it would be something funky like that. But we, again, uh, because then we go from zero and can increase and then, you know, this line would all, uh, go all the way down. So this is the preliminary notes for our worksheet that we're gonna come back to uh, next class is Thursday or Friday. Yeah, okay, so let's, um, get to the last bit for our, our quiz and go to the quiz. Um, so it should be a pretty simple quiz for you guys today. So the motion map for this situation, for the XT, be something like, again, you don't have to put you, you know, I, I gotta go in gas 25 or 10, or, so you know that you're going to be increasing position because your data table shows you that. So you can just do something like this. That shows me that, you know, you don't have to be that exaggerated, but that shows me, tells me that you know that this is uh, on a motion map that my position is dramatically increasing every second. Okay, any questions before we go to our quiz? Do we incorporate CERs into our quiz answers? What do you mean by that? The CERs are already incorporated into the question, so there's no need for you. I'm, I'm... short answer, no. Um, okay, so quiz time. <laughs> 